Hi guys, it's Mark Zikri, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zikri of Space Command, and I'm here to talk about great TV shows, good TV shows, bad TV shows, everything across the board, and and also a terrific pilot that I just saw that I want to recommend that you uh, that you watch as well. So um, lately, basically, I've been c catching up on some science fiction TV shows I hadn't had a chance to uh, to watch before, including. Uh, uh, Define Gravity, which is uh, written by and produced by James Perriott. And I worked with him on uh, Forever Night. I wrote an episode of that show a few years ago, and he's a very talented man. And Define Gravity deals with a group of astronauts uh, on a mission around the solar system. It only ran 13 episodes. And it was sort of very influenced by Lost, so it has so it, so it has flashbacks of the astronauts' lives five five years earlier when they were they were in training. And for me, there's too much of that and too little of the mission. But it's still a very entertaining show with a very very good cast, and uh, and I really enjoyed it. I watched all 13 episodes. It was made back in 2009. And, you know, I've been catching up on Ascension and Extant, and, you know, Ascension, I just don't buy the premise, and I, so that kind of leaves me a bit cold, and I think there's, like, a lot of gratuitous nudity and things like that, and just, you know, it's not, it's not my cup of tea. And, uh, and Extant had a really good premise, and I like Halle Berry, but, again, it goes totally off the rails as it goes on, and just kind of loses itself and is 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 uh, ba basically not keeping true to its characters and it's just going here hither and yon for shock value. So uh, so I think it's a, an opportunity lost. But uh, but there's a terrific pilot I just sh saw and I want to recommend it to you. It's by Frank Spotnitz who did the X Files and it's, it's it's an adaptation of one of my favorite books uh, in the early 60s. I think 1962. Philip K. Dick wrote a book, a novel, called The Man in the High Castle. And it dealt with a world in which the Axis powers, the Nazis and the Japanese, won World War II. And the eastern half of the United States is ruled by the Nazis, and the western half is ruled by Japan. And it's a phenomenal novel. It won the Hugo for best, best novel that year, the top award in science fiction. And Ridley Scott uh, acquired it, and, and Frank Spotnitz has just done the pilot for Amazon and uh, Amazon.com, and you can watch it and you can vote on it. Uh, and uh, I think you might have to be an Amazon Prime member, but, uh, but it's just a spectacular pilot. It's wonderfully done. I, I immediately uh, sent Frank uh, uh, Spotnitz a message congratulating him, and he, and he emailed me back and was very uh, uh, you know, kind and, 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 and great, grateful and graceful in his response. So uh, it's, uh, it's really lovely, lovely to see that level of work being done. And the funny part is that, uh, that I'm a huge nut for stories about the Nazis winning World War II. Uh, first of all, I um, wouldn't be here. There'd be no Mr. Sci-Fi channel and no Mr. Sci-Fi if, uh, if the Nazis had won. And, uh, and so I've, I've followed these kind of stories over the years. And there's a, tr there's a wonderful three-part miniseries uh, that was made in the 1970s on the BBC called An Englishman's Castle. It stars Kenneth Moore, who, uh, who also starred in A Night to Remember, a, a great film about the sinking of the Titanic. And it's about a man who's writing a soap opera about World War II in a Nazi-occupied England many decades later, and it's, it's just a wonderful piece of work. There was also a great documentary, pseudo-documentary, called It Happened Here, about the uh, Nazis uh, invading England, and that was done by Kevin Brownlow, who later did a series, uh, documentary series on silent films called the, Parade, the Parade's Gone By that James Mason narrated. And that pseudo-documentary took Kevin Brownlow eight years to make, and so you can actually see, see the actors aging between shots. And it was done in black and white, and I met Kevin Brownlow at Ray Bradbury's house, and he told me about the trials and tribulations of making that, that piece. And he, he used real Nazis in it, in some cases, uh, Germans from World War II. It was made in the early 60s, and also one uh, genuine British Nazi who uh, espouses his viewpoints, and it's quite, quite chilling. And, but a wonderful piece of work. And Kevin uh, Brownlow wrote a book called um, it's called How It Happened Here, which is about the making of that film, and it's quite an entertaining piece of work. I, I recommend it. And, of course, there's another book called Fatherland about the Nazis winning World War II, and President Kennedy is President Joe Kennedy, who is uh, Jack Kennedy's father, and he was a, uh, a, a Nazi sympathizer, or at least had leanings that way. And uh, it was, the book is very good, and the, there's a miniseries made of it starring Rutger Hauer that's not as engaging. Uh, not as well done, but there's a very good BBC uh, radio adaptation starring Anton Lesser that I, that I recommend. And Len Dighton wrote a novel called SSGB, which is again about the Nazis in Great Britain. And, 
and so there's a handful of these things. There's a, there's a book on, on how, you know, how Hitler might have won the war that I've been reading, which is fascinating as well. So, that, so, so you, can, you can find these stories. But again, if you haven't seen uh, uh, The Man in the High Castle, I urge you to, to check it out. And I think you'll be really well rewarded. I hope it goes to series. Uh, the viewers can vote on which pilots they want to see go to series, and I would recommend that one. And, uh, and, in, and in terms of greatest TV show ever, uh, I think for my vote that would be Twilight Zone. No surprise there. But I think it's not just the greatest show ever for its content, but for the influence it had on television. So many showrunners, uh, that's their favorite show. And they grew up wanting to make TV because of what Rod had done. And uh, he was really the first showrunner where the writer ran the show. And second, second runner-up uh, might be um, uh, The Wire, which because David, uh, you, know, you know, David basically... Um, came up with a great idea of showing us how politics work, how the cops work, how the drug dealers work, how the newspapers work, how schools work, just basically taking apart a city, in this case Baltimore, and, uh, and it's just an astonishing piece of work and it really looks at the real world rather than TV just being influenced by other TV shows. So uh, if you haven't seen The Wire, I recommend that you watch it. So that's about it for now. So uh, if you have comments, uh, want to subscribe, spread the word, do all the things you do, that's much appreciated. We'll talk to you really soon. But, uh, but I'm really glad that I got to see what hopefully will be the beginning of a terrific television show. And that's it until next time. And, and if you haven't read The Man in the High Castle, I urge you to, uh, to check it out. It's, uh, it's well worth the time. It's one of Philip K. Dick's best. And as you know, he also did... Uh, did Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, which uh, was the inspiration for Blade Runner, again one of my favorite films. So that's it for now. Talk to you again really soon. Bye-bye.